Publisher is a page layout program to help you create complex and professional looking publications. That's why they give you so many tools to help you insert and arrange artwork and images. But let's face it, the most important part of any publication is the text. The pictures and graphics are only supposed to highlight and enhance it. The way Publisher handles text is what separates it from simple word processing programs like Microsoft Word. That isn't to say that Microsoft Word isn't complex or that you can't create impressive, visually interesting publications with it, because you can. But because Publisher is typically used to deliver professional quality publications to commercial printers, it offers slightly more sophisticated tools for typesetting. For instance, tracking and kerning options are more complex in Publisher than in Word. Tracking refers to the spacing between letters in entire blocks of text, while kerning refers to the spacing between two individual letters. And we'll talk about that more later in this lesson. Anytime you enter text into a publication, you must enter it into a text box. Sometimes Publisher automatically creates a text box for you. You can, for example, open a blank publication and just start typing. In this case, Publisher automatically creates a text box that fits within the margins of the currently selected page. A text box is an object. You can resize objects, move them, delete them, and even stack them on top of each other like you can other objects. So let's look at a simple text box. As you can see here, the text box is identical in nearly every way to any other object box. It has the handle on the top, which you can drag to the right or left to rotate it. It has circles at the corners, which you can use to easily expand or contract it. And the box is in between the corners to drag the sides out. What's more, you can even change the box's border. You can format text boxes with color or special effects. To do so, double click on a text box. Go to the Shape Styles group in the Drawing Tools Format tab. The Shape Styles gallery has different formats that you can use for your text boxes. You can scroll down to see different options, or you can format your own. Use Shape Fill to add a fill color. Use Shape Outline to add an outline color. You can use the shape effects in the same way you added effects to images. And if you want to delete a text box, deleting a text box is as easy as selecting the box, right-clicking on it, and choosing Delete Object or Cut. You can also hit the Delete key on your keyboard. Whenever you select a text box or create a new one, the text box tools and the drawing tools become available to you. You'll see these new tabs up in the ribbon as shown here. You should already be familiar with the Drawing Tools Format tab. As we learned earlier, from there you can change the border of your box, add a fill in 3D effects, and wrap other text around it. So in this section, we're going to focus on the options in the Text Box Tools tab. The first button on the far left is called the Text Fit button. This tells Publisher how you want the text to fit into the selected text box. We'll take a look at the options and explain them. To gain access to them, click on the Text Fit button and then a drop down menu will appear. So first we have Best Fit. This option allows Publisher to determine how to fit the text. This takes into account the size of the text box and tries to guess what your intentions were. For instance, if you were to draw a large text box, type something into it and then choose this button, the text would expand to fill the entire text box. If you were to then type even more text into the box, the text would shrink until all of it could fit inside. Shrink text on overflow is almost the same as best fit, except its focus is on shrinking the text so it stays inside the text box. Unlike the best fit button, it will only expand text back to the original font size when overflow text is deleted. For grow text box to fit, instead of shrinking the text to fit inside the box, this button makes the box bigger to fit all of the text. The size of the text itself never changes. And finally, if you select Do Not Auto Fit, this option does not adjust either the text or its box. Overflow text, which is text that doesn't fit inside of the box, is simply unseen. Instead, red buttons will appear in the border around the text box telling you that overflow text exists. An ellipsis also appears in a box near the bottom right corner of the text box, which you can click on in order to thread the text in another text box. And we'll talk more about that later in this lesson. You can also drag the box to a bigger size by yourself in order to fit all of the text. The next button in the ribbon is the Text Direction button. 
The button itself is self-explanatory. It takes horizontal text in a text box and makes it vertical. As you can see, it's really not much different than rotating an ordinary text box. Next, we find the hyphenation button. This button allows Publisher to automatically hyphenate the text in the selected text box. You might use the hyphenation button to better fit each line of text. Here's the hyphenation window, and this allows you to automatically turn hyphenation on or off, and to configure the hyphenation zone. In this example, the hyphenation is set to 0.25 of the right margin. This means that if the syllable ends within 0.25 of the right margin, Publisher will hyphenate the word. Now for now we're going to skip over the font group in the ribbon because we're going to talk about those buttons in the next section. And so we're going to look at the alignment group instead. You can use the nine buttons here on the right to change the text alignment within the selected text box. The options in the first line include align top left, align top center, and align top right. Next row is align center left, align center, and align center right. And then finally in the bottom, align bottom left, align bottom center, and align bottom right. You can use the columns button to break the text into columns. You're given the following options when you click on the downward arrow. One column, two columns, or three columns. To add even more columns, or to configure the white space between each column, click on the more columns button. You can have up to 63 columns within a single text box. Here we've entered two columns with a spacing between each column of 0.08 inches. Click OK when you're finished. The margins button refers only to the margins inside the text box. That is, the white space between the edges of the text to the border of the text box. It's not the same as your page margins, which we talked about in an earlier lesson. Clicking the arrow at the bottom of the margins button gives us a bunch of quick configurations. If any one of these are adequate for what you want, click on it to apply it to the text box. If you'd like to create a custom margin, click the custom margins button at the bottom, and this window opens. Here you can enter your own values and then click OK when you're finished. Now let's talk about formatting text. To type text into a text box, click on the box to activate it. Once activated, the cursor will appear and you can start typing. Formatting the text you type is nearly identical to Microsoft Word, except there are two ways to access the tools. In Publisher, you can go to either the Home tab or the Textbox Tools Format tab. From either of these locations, you can change all of the attributes of your text from the font style to the character size to the color. So let's look at some of these tools. The box right here that says Calibri is where you'll want to change the font. You have access to every font installed on your computer, but you should be aware that not all fonts can be embedded into the publication. Calibri is a type font. This course, for instance, was typeset and Calibri. But when you click on the box, a drop-down window will open, allowing you to scroll through and even preview other fonts installed on your computer. Select the style that you want. To the right of the font style box is the font size box. You can click on the box and type in a custom value, or use the arrow on the right to select a preset value. The smaller the number, the smaller the font, and vice versa. The larger the number, the larger the font. Alternatively, you can click on the Increase Font Size button for a larger font, or the Decrease Font Size button for a smaller font. Each of these will increase or decrease the font size by one value. You can change the color of the font by clicking on this button. And as you can see, the font color of the text in the text box, or selected text, appears on the button right here below this letter A. The Clear All Formatting button clears all character level formatting from the text box. As you can see, that brought us back to our default settings. Now you may want to add boldface, italicize, or underline a section of text within a text box. The boldface command in Microsoft Publisher is represented by an uppercase boldfaced B. Italics are represented by an uppercase italicized I, and underline is represented by an uppercase U with a line under it. These buttons are located directly below the font type window in the font group. To add italics, boldfaced or underlining to any portion of a text within a publication, select the desired text, and then click the appropriate button for the effect you want to add. To the right of these options, you'll see these two boxes with X's on them. This button, as a subscript character, which is a small character below a letter, 
And this button adds a superscript character, or one that appears above the character. Both the subscript and the superscript characters appear much smaller than the font size you've selected. For example, if you were going to type E equals MC squared, that's an example of where you would want to use these buttons. Below these buttons, you'll also see the Change Case option. If you click on this, you'll see a list of your case options. Now let's talk about tracking and kerning. Tracking refers to the amount of space between all the letters of a selection of text. It's usually done to the text to change the overall appearance and make it easier to read. Kerning refers to the amount of space between two individual letters and is most commonly adjusted in headlines. Why? Because some combinations of letters may look awkward together, such as A and W or V and A, and may affect the flow of the I over the text. As we mentioned earlier, Publisher gives you some tools to change these values. They can be found in the font group when you click on character spacing. And you'll be presented with a series of quick options as shown here. If you'd like a little more control over the spacing than what you're given here, click on the More Spacing button. It'll launch this window. From here, you can shrink or stretch the selected text or change the tracking options. You can also fine-tune the spacing between two characters with the kerning options. And a preview will appear in this box here. When you're satisfied with your selections, click Apply and then OK. You can also add drop caps. A drop cap is a simple embellishment that, if used correctly, can make your publications look more interesting and professional. Basically, all it is is a letter at the beginning of a section or paragraph that is larger than the text that follows it. But instead of extending upward, which is what you would do if you just tried to increase the font size for a single letter, it drops a few lines down. Creating a drop cap in Publisher 2013 is incredibly easy. Just go to the Textbox Tools Format tab, go into Typography, and click on the Drop Cap button. Now the cursor should be positioned in the paragraph you'd like to add the drop cap to, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in front of the letter you want to add the effect to. So once you're there, choose the drop cap style that you like, and you can choose to place a drop cap within the paragraph or in the margins. To exercise a little more control over it, click on Custom Drop Cap. You'll then see this dialog box appear. You can have the letter drop as many lines as you'd like, and even choose how much space to put between it and the text that follows. You can see what our drop cap looks like. Now let's talk about text flow and connection of text boxes. We mentioned overflow text earlier, that is, text that simply doesn't fit inside of a single text box. We also told you that text boxes that have unseen overflow text will have red buttons in the border and a bold ellipses in a box in the lower right edge of the text box. So you can see we have those red marks in our border now. Clicking on the ellipses tool loads the cursor with overflow text. When a cursor is loaded like that, it turns into what looks like a coffee cup with some sparkly magical substance spilling out of it. Once the cursor is loaded, you can click on another text box to thread the two text boxes together. That means that all of the overflow text from the original box will automatically fill the new text box. Whenever a text box is threaded, the border around it changes. You'll see a black arrow in the upper left edge of it, and another in the lower right edge as shown here. Clicking on the left arrow will take you to the text box earlier in the thread, and the arrow on the right will take you to the text box later in the thread, if there is one. It should be noted, though, that either of these arrows might be absent if there are no text boxes before it or after it. For example, if it's the first text box in the chain, the left arrow will be absent. If it's the last text box in the chain, the right arrow will be absent. Now let's talk about text effects and word art. Just as you can add special effects to images and text boxes, you can also add special effects to text. To do this, go to the Text Box Tools Format tab and look at the Word Art group. This is the Word Art Gallery. By selecting the drop-down arrow, you'll see the various formats of Word Art you can easily apply to the selected text. So if you see a style that you like, click on it to select it. You can also create your own text special effects. To the right of the Word Art Gallery, you'll see these three choices. Text Fill allows you to choose a fill color for your text. Text Outline lets you choose an outline color for your text. And Text Effects lets you apply special effects such as shadow, reflection, glow, or bevel, just as you can with images. For example, you could turn our text into this. 
or you could turn it into this. Text effects are fun to add to spice up a publication. They also come in handy if you're designing a newsletter, brochure, or flyer in Publisher. So take the time to play with text effects and word art styles. Get familiar with how they can change the look and feel of text in your publication. And now let's talk about the Format Painter. The Format Painter tool is located under the Home tab in the Clipboard section. It looks a little bit like a broom, but it acts more like a paintbrush. Using it, you can borrow the formatting from text and apply the same formatting somewhere else in your publication. It operates a lot like the copy function in Word, except instead of copying text, you're copying formatting. To use the Format Painter, place your mouse cursor in the middle of the text that has the formatting you want to apply. Now click on the Format Painter button. Next, select the text you want to change to paint it with the borrowed format, and you'll notice our cursor changed into a paintbrush. Release the mouse, and the new formatting is applied. You can also use the Format Painter for objects. Simply click the Format Painter button, select the object that you want to borrow formatting from, and then brush over the object that you want to share the formatting.